Hello and welcome to this Hammerting tutorial video. Uh, I will going, be going through the basics uh, real quick, so uh, strap in. So I've started a new game here and uh, the main parts I guess you could say are the dwarves that we have here. Three little dwarves. And if you're new to the game I recommend that you look at this little thing uh, which you can click and that will bring up the Book of Tings. Uh, you can wait with reading with reading this a little bit uh, until you've uh, gotten a little bit more familiar with the uh, controls and so on. But it's there and it'll pop up whenever there's something new to show you. I also recommend that you look at the cave missions. Uh, these are, uh, to a large extent, sort of a, um, a tutorial in some sense to get you through the basics of the game. So, for example, here is stone from stone. This will tell you how to start constructing the first uh, building that you can build in the game. So maybe we can just do that real quick. So we're going to construct a small quarry. And buildings are in this tab right here and in this right here. So from the start uh, we only have one room and rooms are the sort of the big uh, big buildings in, in Hammerting. So I'm just going to click that and click here and then the dwarves are going to uh, start building it. Uh, I'm gonna speed up the time a little bit so they they finish quickly. Boom. Oh, and we almost missed it, but uh, we were actually attacked by a few slimes here. Nothing too dangerous at the start of the game. Now that it's built, we can actually open the crafting interface, and we see that the next thing to do is we want to craft some granite chunks. So we're gonna click the granite chunk from the recipes list and click. And we can just click that a few times. Uh, you can also hold shift and control to create even like larger batches. It's uh, You can never have too many granite chunks really. Uh, so that's how you craft things. Uh, uh, the next thing I like to do when I play the game uh, at the start is to send out and explore a little bit to the side because we've only un uncovered a small area of the map here. So let's do that. Let's take uh, well, actually, we don't really need to select anyone. We can just click the move and click over here and click move and move over here and our drawers will explore in, in those directions and that will uh, explore, uh, show us a little bit more about the map. So here we can see that we have some copper in the wall. <coughs> copper is sort of the uh, uh, core early metal that you will find and as you can see it's, it's in the background in the wall. Uh, so we'll need to mine it out from the background. And what we'll do is we're gonna uh, mine uh, these two tiles away so that we have a clear path down there. And over here we're gonna see how this goes. Nice. Uh, we can also, if we select a dwarf like this and right click, we can uh, give them individual commands. This is good. Uh, this, as you can see, what you can see here is uh, coal. And coal is useful for um, fueling some of the buildings, such as the foundry. So if you're confused sometime about why your dwarves won't do anything in the foundry, it may be that the foundry is out of uh, fuel. So we can uh, set these to be mined. I just used the hot key for mine here. So as you can see, uh, coal is starting to fly out here. and as is mining, or uh, yeah, sea cliff here, and uh, uh, the dwarves will usually just leave them uh, everything be on the map. And once there is a need for it, they will take them, pick them up, and store them somewhere else. Uh, for example, move it to the foundry. Here we have some nails, uh, some moldy bags. Uh, so I'm going to right click on that, and that will make them uh, basically uh, rummage through them and see what they found find inside them. So here we found some old cabbage. That's nice. Uh, you may have also noticed these at the start of the map. We also found uh, a few other uh, things we can loot. Uh, you can also click on them and choose rummage. Uh, so let's just see what we find in them. Speed up the time. Oh, oh, some lumber. Uh, that's great. And some army rations I believe I saw as well. That's nice to get some food. Uh, so lumber is worth noting. Uh, it's quite hard to come by. You can either come by them like this, you just find them randomly in the cave, or in the overworld there is a mission that you can, uh, or a few missions that you can uh, accept, and they, they will give you lumber, and lumber is a really useful resource. <coughs> so let's make them mine this copper as well. 
some of it will actually fly down into this cave and will be uh, sort of lost until we can dig down there or go down there but that's fine we only need a little bit to start with so now that we have uh, built a quarry and it has a bunch of uh, granite chunks uh, let's build our next thing and that's gonna be uh, uh, a foundry and in order to get a foundry we need to go to the knowledge window and uh, unlock the metallurgy knowledge so uh, these uh, different types of knowledges or technologies uh, have two costs uh, mountain lore and this one costs trade lore and you can see those over here how much you have of each uh, mountain lore is typically gained by exploring the mountain uh, and trade lore is typically gained by completing missions on the overworld so now I've purchased this metallurgy and that will unlock crafting copper ingots and building a small foundry so let's go do that let's put it over here it's a nice spot boom and yeah you, here you can see the <laughs> war is kind of flying all over the place but we have at least some here on the ground that's uh, good enough I think uh, this looks like a, a bridge we might want to uh, pass so I think we should build some uh, scaffolds please note that these uh, are not final art uh, we are currently reworking them so that's uh, they, they probably won't look like this when you play the game uh, So let's see, foundry should be soon done. So the foundry requires blocks of granite, and if we look at the uh, quarry, we can craft a few of those. I think we start with a few, but we can build some more as well. And I'm gonna add some more uh, granite chunks. So we can take a quick look at the dwarf. Uh, and um, So the dwarf has a few different things to, to note. These ones are quite important. Uh, you you should ensure that your dwarfs are never low on either of these because that's gonna have different uh, negative effects on the dwarf. Uh, the traits can provide different stat bonuses and such and whenever the dwarf gains levels uh, they will get attribute points and you can use that to spend on different stuff. So I can show how that works in a short while. They also have professions, and professions are sort of what they are good at. I think that makes sense. Uh, so, <clears throat> the one we looked at, Mr. Hors uh, Grufsten, uh, he's a pretty good stonemason, and uh, I think that makes sense because he was in the uh, quarry and was mining some, some stone. Uh, also, I've noticed the tool belt. So, the tools are what they use in order to be able to do their work. Uh, so, if, uh, for example, uh, Hors here didn't have a, tool, um, a pickaxe, uh, I don't think he could actually go into the quarry and uh, do his work unless one of these also allowed for that but I don't think they do so yeah uh, so during the course of the game you will need to upgrade your items to to uh, make them even better okay now we have a few copper ingots we can craft and they will start to carry those uh, hopefully actually maybe we need to do this yeah that should be okay let's see what I have yeah let's craft a few more of these I'm gonna gonna speed up the time a little bit there we go and uh, now they should be able to start uh, hauling and crafting with the copper ore that we've located so I, I think the next uh, important part is the overworld. So uh, let's go there. You can also recruit dwarves if you click this mountain, uh, this entrance, if you want to have more dwarves, which you do eventually. So the overworld, this is a good place to get uh, different kinds of resources that you can find in the map. And it's also how you currently actually win the game uh, by uh, making sure that your allies have everything they need so they can conquer the uh, uh, the dread horde your allies are the league of methis okay so let's go to the Granford bridge and we can see that there's a mission here you can click on that they want 10 granite chunks and in reward we'll get a few different stuff 
all of these are really good to have. So we're going to accept that mission. And as soon as we do that, we can see that it's listed here. And we can see that our guys are um, guys and ladies <laughs> are starting to pick up granite chunks and move them here to this uh, chest. And that's where they sort of do their uh, transfer of overworld missions. So if I'm going to speed up the time a little bit. I guess I suppose I can uh, craft a few more of these. And as, as soon as this completes, uh, we see that it's ready for delivery. And we can complete it. Boom. And now we have some more uh, fun resources here in our tab. And I think we earned some money as well to our mountain horde. So this is really the basics of the game. Uh, the drawers are fairly self-sufficient. Uh, they will do... Um, They'll do stuff uh, by themselves and figure out who should do what pretty pretty well. If you want to have a, a better control or more information, you can look at the job broker. Here you can click stuff to uh, maybe uh, steer a little bit who gets to do what, for example. Uh, this is do an overhaul, as you've seen. Uh, should come yeah, in a not too, too long a while. Um, Yeah, like like I mentioned, the goal is really to uh, win on the overworld, and in order to do that, you need to dig deep and find uh, cooler resources and even more buildings. As you can see, we have a, a decent tech tree here. This is also going to grow even more. Uh, you need to figure out which sort of order is the best way to to progress your base and to figure out your playstyle in this game. Uh, defend yourself against the monsters and attack them uh, when you find one of their lairs. Oh, here we, for example we have a killer plant. So let's say we want to attack that, then I guess we want to dig away this part here. I'm speeding up the game. Oh no, I think uh, Drolf is uh, fleeing. Yeah, he's going home to uh, to heal himself, but our other dwarves are coming to the rescue. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, he met a few different things here. Uh, slimes, the, uh, the killer plant, and a goblin as well. All hanging out at the same place. Yeah, I guess that's what can happen. Uh, you can also look at the mountain home ledger. This will list all of the things that you have collected in either ch like chests or in inventories uh, or in the dwarf's inventory. And if you want to, you can use this as a quick way to sell stuff. So maybe you don't want 26 granite chunks. So you can just sell them. Click there. And if we now look at the inventory of this quarry here, you can see that these have been marked for selling. You can also sell in individual items by right clicking and doing sell. And <clears throat> what that will do is that they will move all of the stuff that's to be sold to the chest and eventually they will be sold and uh, you will start earning some money. Earning some money is really something that you want to do because that allows you to hire more dwarves and your dwarves do require a bit of a salary that they will uh, from time to time go to pick up. So. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so you need to make sure that you have enough money on the uh, in, in the bank, so to speak. And that is basically it. Uh, there are of course more stuff here. You can post lanterns, uh, build chests, and that will uh, collect whatever is needed. Uh, let's build a few more of these. Yep, now you can see that these have been sold and we have a little bit more money than we used to. And we are now waiting for some granite chunks for to this to be delivered. We can uh, rummage through these while we're waiting. And here is Horsey coming with some granite chunks.
now we have our chest and we can say that we want in it maybe uh, maybe ingots or uh, or something maybe ore copper ore for example uh, so that will make them uh, put only copper ore in there um, yeah I, I mean there's lots more to say and do uh, but this is just the basics of the game and I think this is enough to get you started uh, just make sure to uh, keep your dwarfs alive and happy. Uh, make sure that you look at the uh, overworld from time to time. You can see here if there are more, more missions to do. Uh, the more missions you do on the overworld, the happier they will be and uh, the, the more progress you will make. This is an, uh, I, uh, an important distinction to make. This is sort of a trade mission and this here is what we call a uh, crisis mission. And what that will do is, uh, if we complete this, then this uh, this location will be uh, either taken over by your people or defended uh, properly by an attack from from the uh, from the enemy. So those are super important to keep track of. Uh, crisis missions are also timed, so you can see that this mission needs to be completed within eleven game minutes. So if we speed up the timer, it's going to move faster. Yeah, that's the gist of it. Uh, I wish you luck and goodbye.